Hello, my wildlings, and welcome to Burrow for the Turnabout, the fourth game. Pretty sure it was fourth. Yes, the fourth game in the Phoenix Wright Zootopia Defense Series. In the last episode of the Defense Series, we were able to save good old Finnick from a, a punishment for a crime he didn't commit. He, I'm pretty sure he got punished for the crime he did commit, which was the attempt to sell drugs. Which is fair enough. I mean, he did it, so... Can't do the crime, do the time? What? You know what I mean. Leave me alone, I'm tired and I'm dealing with hay fever. Let's move on. <laughs> Burrow for the turnabout. <gasps> I see you there. You sneaky little bastard, you. I'm on to you. Oh god, I'm going to have to do his voice again. It's been so long, I can't remember it. <clears throat> Nick and Judy's apartment. August 2nd. Aw, missed my birthday. <laughs> Phoenix! I hope you're all set. No, it's not like I have any bags to pack, huh? Oh, true. You ever get tired of wearing the same suit? Well, I imagine he must do. As long as I get it washed, no. Of course, I seldom wear anything but my current attire. Not ev I even sleep in it, just because I'm so sexy in it, clearly. And by current attire, I am including this smirk on my face, obviously. In all its frilly glory. I'm not sure if that's a death stare or if he's just sort of constipated. Either way, I don't want to be near him right now. It shows my elegance in the courtroom compared to your disorganized chaos. I prefer the term controlled chaos. You know, the sort of the panic helps me uh, solve cases. How many court cases have you won again recently? Hmm? Just wondering. <laughs> Hasn't stopped me beating you all, all but one time. Okay, that's a definite death stare. That's possessed Edgeworth about to tear his face off. And how many of those would you have lost if I hadn't stepped in? Hmm? He's got you there, Spike. Alright. We're a team. That's the point here. Teamwork and solidarity. What is with you, Edgeworth, trying to poke fun at people? We're a team. This isn't Team Synergy. What are you doing? My trial is one particular example. Touché. We'll call it a team effort. Whatever you say. So, you ready to go? Yes, Judy, I am. I think we're all ready to get going before you explode. Oh, sorry, I just haven't been home for a while. Oh? Well, the last time was a couple months before you turned up. I introduced Nick to my parents, brothers and sisters. That was an awkward meeting. That bad, huh? Ah, my charms won them over in the end. Well, bar one. Stew. One? My grandfather. He's quite old, from a different time, you could say. Ah, him. Yeah. That's understandable. I don't remember. This might have been a deleted scene, but didn't he say... What is that, Trudy? Ask her if she's been eaten yet. No, oh, for goodness sake. No one got eaten, Pop-Pop. Well, foxes are red because they were made by the devil. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's a very different time. Hmm. He's really not a fan of foxes. Oh. How old is your grandfather? 102 years old. Um, excuse me? I don't think rabbits live that long, do they? Wait, 102 years old? Is that, like, normal in this place for your species? Oh, hardly. He's just one of the lucky ones. You do realise some of our own people have reached that age, don't you, right? Of, co of course, it's just surprising. For all we know, the judge could be closing in on it. 
He is a rather private man in some aspects. Perhaps not private enough sometimes, though. Oh, will we be hearing from that bogo fellow? Hmm, that reminds me. I was at a children's party once. I, I don't know who the child was. I just sort of popped in because I smelt cake. And there he had a pogo, all wrapped up neatly. So I took it, and I jumped around on it for a few hours. You know, I, I once burnt a child once. It was an accident, I swear. He tried to throw me off, a po off the pogo stick, and I, I kind of threw a cake at him. I didn't realize it still had the candles lit on it. It was my bad. It, it was a mistake. It happens. Ugh. Maybe someday we'll find out exactly how old he is. Who knows? Inquiring about a person's age is a rude subject, right? Yes. Actually, I remember... I'm not going to give any names or anything for reasons, but we were working with... I was working with someone for uh, a project, a sort of a festival we were... kind of thing we had around. It's all about uh, cinema and... Uh, writing and all just trying to inspire kids to write and stuff and we had this time where we we were talking to the person we were working with like me and the group of friends from uni we were talking to them and they were talking to us and they said how about we go around the circle introduce ourselves gives our name and age we all go around giving our names and age and we get to her and she says oh, my name's this but i'm not going to tell you my age because a lady never tells her age it's like, you've just had all of us do it. Are you saying these people aren't ladies? Hmm? Honestly, she wasn't a terrible person. It just felt like she was more used to working with children than she was adults in a university course trying to help her with her work here. So, it, it, it wasn't great. It was nice enough, though. Moving on, though. Huh? Right, sorry. Come on, let's stop stalling before Judy arrests us for loitering or something. Oh, hardy ha. Ha. <laughs> Just get moving already. All right, all right. To the train station it is. It'll be interesting to see where Judy is from. So, now what? Let's talk. So, your family. So, what's up with your family? Oh, they're farmers. Our family has been in Bur Bur Bunny Burrow since its founding. In fact, it's said that my ancestors were the first to kill the inhabitants who were there first so that we could have it. It was savage and ferocious, but it was many years ago. How many? Like three, about three years ago. Oh, uh, I see. She's way older than three. That doesn't work. <laughs> Still. Anyway. It's new Buddy Burrow. It happened after the Buddy Burrow you saw in the film. Never mind, I'm sorry. Our whole family has a tendency to be in the farming business, one way or another. Not you, though. Nope, obviously. She says as she secretly waters the plant behind her. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a cop since I was a kid. My parents weren't thrilled. They weren't? So they aren't supportive of your chosen lo lifestyle? On the contrary, they're in... they are, in their own way. They're just nervous about large cities, think I'm going to get shot or something. Oh god. Oh god, that better not be foreshadowing. That better not be fucking foreshadowing. She better not get shot. Well, I mean we met because of a murder. Oh, try not to mention that to them. I'll never hear the end of it. Hmm, fair point. So, tell me about Bunny Burrow. What about Bunny Burrow? Oh, it's a rural place, populated mostly by bunnies like myself. Oh, other prey species also live there, and one or two predator families too. And soon to get one more with Nick visiting. And us too, I suppose. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's not really something you think about in this world, is it? That we're predators. Because we are. We're the top of the food chain and all that biz. Hmm. I wonder how that conversation would go down in their world. Oof. I wonder if they've talked to anyone about the fact that in their world they don't... Well, they do still eat a lot of other animals. Might be kind of awkward if you go there and say, Hey, got any rabbit stew? Oh, we have a rabbit called Stew. Hello. Oh. He'll do nicely. <laughs> Moving swiftly on before I get too hungry. Hmm. Given that we eat meat, I feel like we're... We'd be assigned predator status. Though I hardly feel like one. Yeah, I mean... We live in a society where we're all the same speed... Where those of us with the cognitive ability to even contemplate such things are the only ones who do it. So we don't really put much thought into the fact that we're separating us between predator and prey because, well, we're not. Then, of course, there are people who will separate ourselves into vegetarian and vegan and meat eaters, which isn't even remotely the same thing because we still don't eat vegetarians. Well, I don't. Too scrawny, you know, probably don't get enough protein in their body, so there's not really much for me to eat. Um, where was I going with this? Forget I said that. It's uh, the judge poking through, as it were. Let, let's just go to the train station before this gets too weird. Zootopia train station, August 2nd, 10.40am. <gasps> I recognise this it is a train station. Well played, Chris. I thought I recognised it from the uh, other game, the one with the the find. So pardon me, with the stuff where you find stuff in the thing, the object finding game, which I've played on the channel. So if you want to watch that, be my guest. Uh, but no, though this is from the actual film. Either that, or it's concept art, or it's none of the above. I don't know. I don't know where this is from. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh, I haven't been back here since that incident. That time I accidentally tripped onto the tracks and was saved by a mouse. That was weird. Super mouse. Never thought I'd see that. But I did. He was pretty cool. Huh. Glad to see everything's back to normal. Well, as far as everyone here is concerned, that's old news. People heal and then they move on. Life thus returns to normal. Well, that kind of thing is normal for us. As is the life of those involved with the law. Lucky us. Oh, it's not that bad. There's nothing like the feeling of knowing you helped someone, that you made the world a better place. Yeah, that's true. There's also nothing like the feeling of a <coughs> of a knife slowly inserted into an apple, which you then cut into little chunks to eat. It's tasty. I prefer my apple in little chunks as opposed to just the whole thing. Although there is something satisfying about just having an apple and crunching straight into it, you know? I am glad that's where that went, because I thought it was going to go somewhere weird. Yes, so did I for a minute there. Hmm, I've helped my share. Eh, I don't know. Uh, don't I know it? I misread that. We have all helped in our share. Uh, isn't it your job to, you know, prosecute? Yes, which I suppose helps society in some way if you're putting away the right people. But that's the whole point of our duo. He puts away the right people, I make sure he doesn't put away the wrong people. And the world's a better place for it. Yeah! Teamwork! High five, Edgeworth. No. Okay. Where once my creed was a guilty verdict, no matter the cost. You of all people should know I no longer believe that, Mr. Wilde. Since I realized this, I have opened my eyes to numerous people being falsely accused. In my investigations, I will only have those I truly believe are guilty arrested. If I can control it. 
And if you don't control it? A lot of arguing. And then maybe, maybe I'll let my inner demon out. And then no more arguing. Just screams. Anyway, where were we? But in the end, I live for the truth above all else. Everything else is irrelevant. The innocent should not be punished for the crimes of the guilty. Which is why I rely on the police and even defense attorneys to assist. Oh, like when Phoenix brings up case-changing evidence. Precisely. Though he does it to an irritating degree. Uh, you're one to talk, Mr... Oh, you've found a point. Uh, here's some evidence that tells you you're full of shit. That I've been hiding and have just pulled from my ass in the middle of a fucking case. Fuck you, Edgeworth. I love you, really. Give me a hug, man. No, I don't do hugs. Fist bump? No. Handshake? Fine. Says the guy who always springs surprise evidence on me whenever I'm on a roll. Yep. I only do as I am required. Embarrassing me in the courtroom, you mean? Our trial shall... Our train shall depart soon, right? Huh. Uh, I have spent far too much time in the courtroom, clearly. Yeah, I know. We better keep an eye on the time. Agreed. So, examine. Where's the clock here? I can't see it! No! I can't keep an eye on the time. Oh, wait, I have a watch. We'll be fine. Actually, I don't know if Felix has a watch. He has a phone. Could probably use that. I don't get how people could do that. Well, I see people all the time just use their phone to see the time. But it's so much easier to just have it on your wrist and just quickly glance at it. Ugh. I just feel almost naked without my watch. It's weird. Although, for a long time, I did have an indent in my skin from where my watch was. So perhaps I wear it a little too much. Let's have a chat. So, what do you think about Bunny Burrow? So how come you're coming along to Bunny Burrow anyway? Hmm. You're not exactly the most sociable type. You normally stay at home, brooding. Yeah, he has that special uh, brooding gargoyle that he sits on and watches over the city from. Since he hasn't had that, he's just been sort of sat on the corner of the bed, crouching, brooding at the plant in the corner. So, it's a bit weird, really. It looks cooler on the gargoyle than it does on the bed, I'll be honest. I do not brood. Sure. And I can be perfectly sociable, thank you. And if I recall, it was you who never had any friends before me back in school. Neither did you. I still saved you during that class trial. Uh, Larry was there too. We don't speak of him. Uh, what's going on here? Ah, uh, just... Reminiscing is all. I think it's best we don't ask, Carrots. You're probably right, Nick. Uh, present. What can I present? Hey, have you seen this? This is cool. We're not on any case. Why are you presenting evidence? Um, why am I presenting evidence? Because it's cool. Let's see what profiles I've got. Otto Hops. Age 100. Oh. Oh, is it Otto who's going to die? Why do I feel like it's going to be him? Also known as Pop Pop is Judy's grandfather, the father of Stuart Hops. How old is Stuart? And how old was he when he had Stuart? Oh lord, these are questions I don't want answered. Uh, don't think there's anything new. My friend since grade school, me, the defense of Toya, lawyer from Los Angeles. Right. No, nothing here. Nothing more to talk about. Let's have a look around. 
Who are you? We don't have long until the train leaves. Good. Good to know. What else is there around here? Who are you? Is that someone? I can't actually tell from where I'm sat. I think that's just part of the tree. Is there like a coffee shop here? Can we get a coffee before we go? I don't actually drink coffee, but I feel like Phoenix would. Nothing of note here. Well, I can't be bothered with that then. Let's move. Oh, I can go to the... I'm at the station. Oh, whatever. Oh, we took the train to the... Okay, I get it. Well, this is certainly... This certainly is different. The contrast in to Zootopia is most notable. It seems peaceful. You could live in worse locales. Hmm. I suspect there's not much work for a lawyer out here, though. Oh, it's true. Not much goes on around here. Bunnyboro doesn't even have its own de dedicated police force. Dedicated police force. I can put words together. Beyond it, the neighbourhood watch. And even that's all volunteers. What if something were to happen? Well, we have medical facilities for injuries. And for major crime, the neighbourhood watch holds the fort while waiting for backup. Backup? The ZPD, usually, since... They can be out here the quickest. But, as I said, nothing has happened here in a really long time. Seems rather inefficient. Oh, another reason I moved to Zootopia. Places like this grow through time. It changes. Bunnyboro won't stay this way forever. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but the people here sure can be stubborn. Hmm. I wonder where you got it from. Yeah, that that was a that would be a bad idea to say. Pretty sure that would earn you two feet to the face. Change doesn't come easily. Time can also change people. It changed me. From a small child to a man. That's about it. That's all that changed. Nothing else. Uh, we'll see. Maybe the change will be generational. Uh, my grandfather at 102 was here for the founding of Bunnyboro. And, well, he's very much stuck in his old ways. Uh, that does tend to happen with grandparents, I would know. My grandparents are... Well, they have their moments, but certainly not as much as you often see in, like, films and things. I wouldn't. I never knew mine. Wow, Edgeworth, thanks to bring the mood down. Had they been still been around, perhaps I wouldn't have fallen into the hands of Manfred von Karma. <sighs> Dude, I'm really sorry, but did you have to bring that up right this second? Von Karma? Uh, Edgeworth's father was... well... Oh, yeah... When we were kids, an earthquake hit the courthouse. Miles, his father, and a court bailiff were trapped in the elevator. Eventually they had all passed due to passed out due to the lack of oxygen, which doesn't really make much sense because why would an elevator be airtight? That doesn't make sense. But still, kind of sucks. But fortunately, someone was kind enough to put a bullet hole through the glass so that they could breathe. Unfortunately, he'd accidentally hit one of them. Sorry, sorry. Shouldn't joke, but it's what I do. When they awoke, Gregory Edgeworth had been murdered. His father. Damn. Dot, dot, dot. It was something that haunted me for years. I had no other relatives and was thus was adopted by prosecutor Manfred von Karma. He raised me to be a prosecutor, but only later would I discover the truth. That Von Karma was the one who murdered my father. Von Karma was nothing more than a criminal, and he got his due verdict in the end. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. But seriously, 
That's really one harsh way to ruin the mood. Sorry. I'm not very good at social interactions. And apparently I'm not very good at not being a dick. <laughs> there is no need to be. It is in the past. Well, moving on to a less depressing subject. Uh, Carrots, I believe that's your mother over there. Hi, I'm terrified of everything. Hi. Uh, Judy, there you are. Hi, how are you? Must be Bonnie Hops, Judy's mother. Oh, I'm doing just fine, dear. Uh, what about you and Nicholas? This is not that different from Judy's voice, but oh well, this'll do. Uh, we're doing just fine, Mrs. Hops. Oh, really? I've seen all about the recent nasty business in Zootopia. Murder, sabotage, and then arson. Oh, and these two must be the lawyers who cracked those cases. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Miss Ho M Mr. Hops. <clears throat> I mean, Mrs. Hops, my apologies. I'm tired and bad at social interactions. My name is Miles Edgeworth. Oh, and so polite, too. Uh, it is a simple courtesy. Nothing more. You're not worth my true politeness. Just saying. Oh, oh, but it goes a long way. Uh, my name is Phoenix Wright. I'm here to... Oh, pleasure to meet you too, Mr. Wright. Uh, now, shall we be off? Ah, well, let's have a chat first. Hello, Bonnie. Oh, you want to... Pardon me? You want to know about me? Yes, if that's not a problem. Oh, well, I don't see why not. I've lived in Ballyborough for my entire life, and I will continue to do so. I met Stu, who took over his father's farm some time ago. And how our family has grown since then. So many children. All of them are here living in Ballyborough. Well, all except for one. The one who turned her back on me. Our family had left us for the city. The... Oh... Oh yes, you're here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Oh, she means me. Yeah, we figured. She was always a dreamer, that one. Despite how often we tried to quell said dreams. So I can imagine. So, about your family. So I understand that you have a rather big family. Tear, you don't know the half of it. I know it can seem strange to other species. Given our world's rabbits, I'm personally not surprised. I myself have many siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, etc. And you're all close. Well, most of us. As it is, some do... Well, get lost in the crowd. Oh, I hope that's not literal. Yeah, that would be awkward. Hmm. Nothing else to talk about. Hey, I have a carrot pen. Are you interested in my carrot pen? I'm afraid sure not... I'm... I'm afraid I'm not sure what you're asking of me, Mr. Wright. Uh, never mind. That's going to be my thing now. I'm going to start showing the carrot pen to, like, every new person I meet now. And all the older ones who I do know. Still. Hmm, anything to look at around here? Let's have a look at the sign. Nothing of note here? No? Anything? Uh, there's a tree. Nope, nothing of note. Okay, well, never mind. Hmm. Well, we'll actually make our way... Where are we going next? Bunny Burrow. That makes sense. Well, we'll actually make our way into Bunny Burrow in the next episode. Bye-bye.